You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. For the New Jack City. Bum. Even in a city premised on mixed cultural attributes and undeniable contradiction, where good and bad are often allowed to co-mingle, outsiders could never step foot in the Cadillou on their own terms. A neighborhood can be a cultural center or a rest haven for crime and poverty, but not both at the same time. The lifelong residents of the Yo were well beyond the binary of good or bad. The third ward in itself is a lifestyle, an identity, somewhat of its own planet. Even at its ugliest time, the residents of the yoke would take pride in everything that it was and wasn't. All the way down to the once rainbow painted mural of Randall Watt, aka Caddy Slim, on the wall of the Rose Tavern, located at 3901 Failure Street. Years later, as part of an initiative called Project Safe Neighborhood that was patrolled by Safe Home, the local dicks in the hood, Canizero would arrange to have the tribute to Slim replaced with a mural showing silhouettes of traditional jazz musicians playing a second line in front of a golden sunset. Ironically, these images will be painted by inmates from OPP. This is the story of Randall Watts, a.k.a. Calio Slim. There are many stories that come to the mind when you mention the iconic name Randall Watts, a.k.a. Calio Slim. To get a more vivid picture, I would recommend that you holler at that boy, Dwayne Shelley, a.k.a. Calio Chill. Contrary to popular belief, Chill is not just some duck on the internet. His back and forth with Terrence was legendary. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Randall Watts, a.k.a. Calio Slim. Unbeknownst to many, the Yo wasn't the only project that Slim would lay his head. Randall used to dip in the D and the MELF. If you know, you know. Notoriously known for hanging at the tab, Slim Frank of choice would be Heinkins. That boy Slim was on them Hanks hard. Infamously known as Calio Slim, Randall will forever be known and respected as a folk outlaw in the city of New Orleans. Not only in and around the Calio projects, but throughout the entire city of New Orleans is where he would rightfully earn a reputation as one of the realest to ever do it. Media outlets will portray Randall as a notorious hitman and a street hustler who had no regard for human life. Percy Miller, aka Master P, will be noted as saying in an interview with Feds Magazine, when you will see Randall's name, people will just run. This is the type of respect that I always wanted. The Yo has a history of birthing some of the most notorious street figures in the N.O. El Broadneck, Sam Scully, Pee Wee, Nap, Levi, Meatball, Tony D, and Turbo, just to name a few. Randall Watts, born April 15, 1968, in New Orleans, Louisiana, with hell from the Calio Projects. Slim would be highly respected as one of the big dogs out the yo. There was never one iron fist that would control the entire Calio Project as a whole, but Randall would be one of the most feared and respected men in the Jacks. Slim's brother, Troy Watts, aka T-Dub, was low-key and calculated. Dub would later get caught up on the Richard Pina case. Earl, or Carney Sr., Slim's pop, is a Baptist minister and a longtime deputy with the Orleans Parish Civil Service Office. Mr. Earl was old school and lived in the yo most of his life. Mr. Earl has always had the mindset the streets will have a lot of hearsay over your children. We as parents do what we can do for them, but as with all things, we cannot control them. If you look behind the curtain to see what's in their heads, half of the times, kids don't care whether they live or not. Randall, who was always a charismatic figure, was known around the yo in the city as Calio Slim. Slim was an alleged peanut associate that was getting it how he lived in the streets. The NOPD report that violence escalated to an all-time high after Sam Clay, aka Sam Scully, was rocked in 1987. Glenn Mitz and Meatball, two notorious street figures from the yo, had the game in a chokehold.
between 93 and 04, 88 people were crushed in the yo. In 1994, the Cali would earn an even bigger reputation as a result, earning the city of New Orleans the title, crushing capital of America. Not to take anything away from any of the other women in Slim's life, Ursula, aka Urs of the Melfa Slim's main. Randall is the father of Ursula's younger daughter, Oshanda, aka Pee Wee. If you know, you know. Pee Wee is the spinning image of her pops. There's no denying that she is Randall's child. Before moving to the MELF, Urs would have an apartment in the Desire Project. Urs had taken this apartment until something became vacant, uptown. It wouldn't be long before Urs would have an upstairs apartment in the MELF. Randall would lay his head in the MELF, going back and forth to the yoke. Before the tab was demolished, there was a sign that hung inside that read, Randall loves Ursula. The Calio Magnolia Beat will forever be a part of the history in the main crime streets of the N.O. It's been over 20 years since this beef was active. John Bryant, aka Rookie, aka Mosquito, was lose his life as a result of this beef. In 2022, the beef would seem to rehatch, this time over the internet, as Cali Chill would take to the internet to challenge stories being told by Terrence Williams. This back and forth would last for months, but would later die down. In 1997, Clem would lose his life in the same streets of the Cali that he ran. There would be a huge second line to celebrate the life of Slim. The pallbearers would carry Slim's body up the street into the tav. CNN would capture it all on film and broadcast it to the world. This was the story of Randall Watts, a.k.a. Calio Slim. Construction of the B.W. Cooper housing project will begin in 1939 and be completed in 1941. Located in Central City, the Calio will be comprised of 1,546 units on 56 acres of land, which is 24 city blocks. The original boundaries of the Calio were South Dojoa, Irado, Calio, which now goes by the Earhart Boulevard. The boundaries of the Calio would also encompass South Pier. In 1941, rent would range from $8.25 a month for a one-bedroom apartment to 22 bucks a month for a three-bedroom apartment. The projects would be sturdy, made of bricks with iron grills and manicured lawns. Like all apartment complexes during the Cali's early days, it was considered a means of working-class families to live comfortably while saving up cash to cop a new home. The Cali would have 690 apartments in its original development. In 1949, a gymnasium would be added at Broad and Calio Streets. In 1954, a 12-block expansion added 860 new units, creating the old side, new side. The expansion would stretch the western boundaries of the Calio back two blocks from Rattle Street to Melfamine Avenue, which now is known as Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. St. Monica's Catholic Church and School were considered anchors of the neighborhood as well as local public schools like Booker T. Washington High School. Since the early 80s, rivals have operated in and around the Calio. These rivalries would escalate in the late 80s, peaking into the early 90s. Percy Robert Miller Sr., born April 29, 1970, known by his stage name, Master P, is a highly acclaimed rapper, record producer, record executive, actor, and entrepreneur. P is also the founder of No Limit Records, which he would later relaunch through Universal Records, Koch Records, and again, got a music entertainment, and currently goes by No Limit Forever Records. P and his brothers all hail from the B.W. Cooper Calio Projects. Lloyd Polite Jr., Henry Butler, Harry Sylvester, and Willie T. All would hail from the B.W. Cooper Calio Projects. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. For the New Jack City. Bum. Bum. This story starts in 1987. Sam Clay, a.k.a. Sam Scully, has been deleted in the mean streets of the Calio Project. The predecessor to his reign would be Glenn Metz. It is rumored that Glenn's organization dominated several housing projects in the city of New Orleans, 
maintaining its grip by crushing anyone who stood in their way. It's the early 90s. The NOPD had cracked down on hustlers and steppers from every hood, making arrests of over 150 individuals. The DEA, along with the NOPD, would peg then miss as the main organizer and manager of a group of individuals known as the Mets organization that moved over 1,000 chickens throughout the New Orleans metropolitan area. Glenn Metz would be labeled by the NOPD as a known enforcer and kingpin from the mid-80s to the early 90s. This stronghold would be held by the Metz organization during a time when New Orleans was the get it how you live capital of the world. Glenn, who would grow up poor and become a product of his environment, would already be known around the St. Thomas and Calio projects for his street activity, supplying birds and allegedly having involvement in over 20 deletions. Gerald Elwood, aka Knapp, was known for driving through the city in his custom armor-plated pickup truck. Rumors were circulating about the truck getting hit up and metal bouncing off. This would turn out not to be true, as Knapp himself would confirm. As Glenn would get bigger, he would be known as one of the first major dudes with a crew to come out of the N.O. Glenn's wife, Danielle, came up in a middle-class two-parent household a few miles away from the St. Thomas Projects with parents that encouraged her to become a nurse. The realities of life in New Orleans would sink in, and Danielle would become a teenage single parent, losing her child's father at an early age and having to drop out of school. In July of 1991, as part of an ongoing investigation, St. John Parish Sheriff deputies would conduct surveillance at the Holiday Inn in Laplace, Louisiana. Room 102 was among the rooms being targeted. Hotel employees would state that the occupants booked for only one night, paid cash, flashed large rolls of bills, and made lots of long distance phone calls. A JPS deputy would observe Ernest Morero go out to a Nissan Maxima parked near the room remove a bag, and return to the room. Shortly thereafter, Ernest, Knapp, William, and Rudolph would leave the room. Ernest and Rudy, both juveniles at the time, would hop into the Maxima. Rudy, who would be driving, placed the bag in the back seat. Knapp and Will would hop into the armored pickup truck. Rudy would pull out with Knapp, following. Both whips would allegedly run a stop sign and a red light. Deputies would pull Rudy over. It is alleged that deputies would legally search the whip and find the work. Deputies who would then search the truck would find a Glock. Further search would reveal a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson on the floor beneath the passenger seat. It is alleged that the deputies would also find a paper bag containing plastic bags with residue on them which had fallen out on the passenger side of the truck. All four would be arrested. A search of the hotel room would recover a triple beam, more plastic bags, and over 5,000 racks. Ernest, Knapp, and Will would ultimately be charged in a three-count indictment. One count charged Elwood and Will with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute. Count two charged Knapp, Will, and Ernest with possession with intent to distribute. Count three charged all three with using and carrying firearms during and in relation to a trafficking offense. They would be all tried and convicted by jury on all charges. Knapp is currently serving three concurrent life sentences plus 30 for his role in the MITS organization. In 1993, Danielle Metz, a.k.a. Boo, was the first time non-violent offender was found guilty under a super kingpin statue as part of her husband's New Orleans organization and sentenced to triple life plus 20 years. Boo will be 26 years at the time and had two small children, Carl, seven, and Glenicia, three. Danielle was sent to prison in Dublin, California in 2016 at the age of 49 after serving 23 years danielle's triple life plus 23 year sentence was commuted by president obama as a part of his clemency initiative to address unfair sentencing practices during the 80s 90s and 2000s in 2000. our author aka meatball 28 at the time would be arrested as he came to work on a Tuesday night, Meatball would make his first court appearance that Wednesday 
as authorities initiated extradition proceedings to return him to Louisiana to face his charges. Meatball, who was being accused of being an enforcer for the Glenn Miss organization, which would be described by the DEA as the largest organization in New Orleans history. Ten people would be announced as co-conspirators in the original indictments. General Arthur, a.k.a. Meatball, is now serving life for his role in the Mets organization. On December the 15th of 1993, Glenn Metz would be sentenced to life in prison after he was convicted by a jury of conspiracy to possess that white with intent to distribute that white, conducting a continual criminal enterprise, money laundering, possession with intent to distribute that white, and carrying and using a firearm in aid of racketeering. On August 14th, 1995, Glenn Metz's conviction would be affirmed by the U.S. Fifth District Court of Appeals on all counts except for the conspiracy charge, which was vacated due to the conviction and life sentence he received for the criminal enterprise charge.